Hello again. Now we're going to see conditions and control flow. And if you recall, control flow is the order in which executions, uh, instructions in your program execute in the processor. And the way you change the flow of control in your program and writing code in a high-level language is using control um, statements like if, while for loops, and do also for loops, and for for loops, as well, and for loops as well. These are all ways in which you can control in which order how the, the control flow goes in your program. And um, a conditional branch instruction, which is a branch, is an instruction that just changes the control flow. And if you make the control flow conditional, which makes it a conditional branch, it turns out that that instruction is sufficient to implement most of the control flow constructs offered in the high, in high level language, like the ones I just told you about. Um, and un unconditional branches, which is branches that just execute no matter what, regardless of the condition, are used to implement things like break and continue. Break just breaks out of a loop and continues, goes back to the beginning of the loop. Those are unconditional. They happen anyways. Okay? Um, and so we, we use unconditional branches for those. And in x86, we refer to branches as jumps because it jumps. You're executing, boom, it jumps to a different part of your program. Okay? either conditional or unconditional. So here are the jump instructions available in x86. They're the form of, they start with the letter J for jump, and X is of various ways of doing jumps. For example, uh, if you do just JMP, it just means jump, that's an unconditional jump. And it's also going to take as a parameter, it's going to take as a parameter a instruction address that it's going to jump to. Okay? So here's another one. If you do JE, I mean ju uh, jump, if equal, or zero, and that's going to be determined by this special condition code register called ZF. Okay? So let me pick another example here. Uh, if you use JL, it's going to be jump if less than. Okay, so if you do a less than, if you do a comparison, and it turns out that it's less than, um, this the jump is going to happen. Okay, I'm going to sh we're going to show examples of that later, and I encourage you to read in the book all of, um, about how all of these instructions work. Um, let's look at the, the processor state again. Remember that we have the registers that we've been playing with already in our, uh, exit, in our assembly programs. These two registers are special. Again, they're the stack pointer and the base pointer. Uh, the instruction pointer tells what instruction is going to be executed next. And note that um, what do you think is going to happen when you execute a branch instruction, you're actually going to change the value of the instruction pointer because it, ch it might change what instruction is going to be executed next. So a branch instruction changes, potentially changes the value of the instruction point register. And finally, the thing that's very important to note here is that we have these four small registers that are single bit registers that you can read. These are the condition codes, okay, uh, that are set by some instructions. We're going to use that to implement conditional branches. That's why in this previous slide I had just showed you, you can determine the condition of whether or not the jump is going to happen based on these condition codes. Let's see now how, how these condition codes are set. The first way we're going to see is just implicit setting. It just happens implicitly when you carry out some um, operations. So these are the single bit condition registers that we're going to be talking about. And they are implicitly set when you execute some instructions, for example, an addition. So this instruction, in a, um, it, it, it performs the arithmetic addition operation, but in addition to that, it also sets some condition codes depending what happens to the result. For example, uh, uh, in the case of add, the CF is set if, if there's a carryout from the most significant bit, which is essentially an unsigned, over, an unsigned overflow happening in the addition. Okay? So the ZF condition is set if the result happens to be equal zero. The S the, the signal flag is set depending on the, on the result. If the result is negative, then SF um, is going to be set. It means it's a negative number. Okay? And now OF happens if there's a two complement overflow. If when you add, the number will be bigger than what fits in the register, what, whatever, it, you're going to have this, this um, bit set. And also be careful if you use the LEA instruction that also computes some, some expressions, some arithmetic expressions, um, you do not set this condition codes. Okay, so be careful with that. That's the implicit setting. The other way is to set the condition codes explicitly using compare instructions. Okay? So, for example, if you do comp L here, which compares a, a, a 
four byte number and you pass it, you pass two um, operands as a parameter source two and source one okay so in what it does essentially it effectively computes a minus b but without without setting the destination it just computes this expression here such that it can set the condition codes appropri appropriately so, so here the cf is going to 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 be set if the carry out from the most significant bit is set okay so it's used for for unsigned comparisons so the zf is set the zero flag set if a equals b why is that because if a minus b equals zero means that a equals b so this set's going to be set it's going to be used for this is useful for an equality comparison now if a minus b is negative we're going to set the sign flag so you know that then that this also means that a is less than b okay? and also the overflow is set if there's a, uh, a two's complement sign overflow okay great Let's see now how the, to set condition codes with the test instruction. Okay, so test instruction also sets the same set of, um, uh, also manipulates the same set of single bit condition code registers. And uh, it takes two operands as parameters, source two and source, and source one. And essentially it works like computing A bitwise with B. Okay, A being source two and B being source one without setting the destination. And that's, that's useful to, do, uh, to have operands be a mask because tests with masks uh, uh, using bitwise AND is normally very, very useful, okay? So, uh, and in this case here, test if the, the ZF flag is set, if A bitwise AND with B happens to be zero. And uh, it SF is set if A bitwise and uh, with B is less than zero, if the, if the most significant bit is set to one, essentially. So now let's look at this example here. We're doing essentially EAX bitwise N with EAX. So this is interesting because ZF is going to be set only if EAX is zero. Go essentially just, just checking whether EAX is positive, negative, or zero. If it's zero, the ZF uh, bit's going to be set. If it's negative, the SF bit's going to be set. So that's going to be useful when you have uh, conditions like if A less than zero. Okay, so this is going to be implemented, could be implemented with a test instruction. We can also read condition codes. Okay, and there's uh, several instructions of the, uh, called set and a bunch of options here. And what they do is they read the condition codes and put, and put the resulting uh, value as zero or one um, the whole byte zero one in, in a general purpose register so you can actually read and, and, and do computation with the contents of the condition code register. So essentially you get the value of the condition code register and you store it into a general purpose register. And I encourage you to look at the book um, uh, for examples of those. We're going to see one now, but you should read how uh, each one of these instructions work. So let's see an example now of using the, the set instructions to read condition codes. Okay? So um, here we have, we have a function called gt that just takes x and y as a parameter, and then we want to return whether x is greater than y. And here's the body of the instruction. Here, what we're doing is getting y and storing it in eax, and now we're comparing y with x, because x is stored in uh, 8 from ebp. Okay? And now we're doing set greater and AL, what is set greater doing? Set greater is going to get, and we're passing AL here, which is the low order byte of the EAX register. And what they're doing is the following. Uh, here we're reading Y and putting in EAX, comparing X and Y, essentially comparing, doing a subtraction and just setting the condition codes. Then AL now is going to be set uh, to one if X is greater than Y, and it's going to be set to zero otherwise. Okay. And this instruction here just zeros just this instruction just zeros the this instruction here just zeros the rest of EAX. So it makes this whole here thing here zero. Okay. So in the end, this is going to hold this is going to be AL is going to be set to one, then if X greater than Y, it's going to be set to zero otherwise. 